In the previous video, we started to add some of the basic skin tones for our monster. Now we can go in and begin the process of adding some of the colors to the areas that we want. Okay, so let's go ahead and start back off with Photoshop. Okay, and here's where we left off in the last video with just the basic skin texture. The area that I want to go in and start to add a little bit of color to now is actually this channel that's in the side of his head. And if I take a look at our 3D model, that's actually this area right here that runs up along and down the side of his head. Okay, so let's go to Photoshop, and that's actually, like I said, this lay this area of the UV layout. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is choose a color that I want to be able to make this. So let's say something that's a very, very pale white, almost a gray. Okay, so let's let's try and find something sort of a medium gray, almost, uh, almost a very light gray. Okay, so maybe 185 for RGMB. Okay, so once I have this light gray color selected, uh, what I want to be able to do is add this onto another layer. Okay, so let's go ahead and make a new layer. Okay, and I'll uh, call this um, channel, just so I can sort of keep these straight. And what I want to do now is now pick a brush size that corresponds with this. Okay, so let's go ahead and pick a paintbrush. And what I'll do is I can go up to Window, Brushes. Okay, or you should actually, um, if you're using a larger uh, display resolution, you should be able to see some tabs up in this upper corner of Photoshop that also has this Brushes tab built into it. But since I'm working with a smaller resolution, those are actually getting cut off on my screen. Okay, so what we can do is just try and pick a brush size that fits pretty well in this area. Okay, that's not bad. So it looks like for me that's going to be about a size 45 brush. Okay, so a few options that I want to be able to change really quickly is I'm actually, uh, first of all, I'm not actually using a mouse to paint these textures. I'm using a Wacom uh, digital tablet with a pen. So it's, I actually really enjoy using this because it's, it has a very natural feel to it of a pen and pencil. And the other thing is it's actually pressure sensitive. So I can, I can determine based on how hard or how soft I push on this tablet, um, I can control the size of my brush based on how hard I push on this tablet. Or I also have control over all of these different uh, things within Photoshop. I can control the uh, opacity of my brush stroke, which these these are things that you really just don't have any control over uh, with just a mouse. Okay, so uh, to paint this, I'm actually going to turn off this shape dynamics, and I want to turn on color dynamics within this brush's palette. Okay, for the opacity, I'm going to link this to the pen pressure, so that way um, as I make a really light stroke on this tablet, we get very little paint, but as I push harder, more paint will be applied, and then as I let off, it tapers off again. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and now, with everything set, we can go ahead and just close this palette, and now on this channel layer, I can go in and just start to paint the areas that I want. Now right now, this UV snapshot, this uh, wireframe is a little bit too... Um, opaque. So I'm actually just going to take this and lower the opacity of this UV snapshot layer just so it's a little easier to see exactly what I'm doing. Okay, and what I'm going to do is just with a light stroke at first come in and start to paint some of this and then come in with a little harder stroke and fill this in. Okay, so I'm just going to really slowly work my way around Okay, and you you can definitely you don't have to have a Wacom tablet to be able to make these uh, these textures. It just definitely makes it a lot easier. These can these can definitely be done with a mouse. It just sometimes is a little bit more intuitive and definitely a lot faster and easier if you had access to a Wacom tablet.
Okay, so I'm just going to use this wireframe as a, just more or less a guide to paint the texture that I want. Okay, and before I go in and add too much detail to this, let's go ahead and see how this looks on our 3D model. Okay, so we can go ahead and save this. And now we can just go back to Maya. Go ahead and go back to our Hypershade. Let's update the PSD textures. Give this just a second. And now we can see how this looks on our 3D model. Okay, and it looks like everything fits pretty well. Okay, so now that I've got this set, I can go in and start to add a bit more detail into the texture of this side channel, which we can start to do that now in the next video.